previously. Let's get started. Okay, our first one here is Stephen Boyd. Thank you. I'm going to talk about a government policy that was released, uh, we haven't got a slide up there yet, um, yesterday. It would have been nice if it was released earlier, but it was yesterday. Um, it's not the one about open office XML stuff that was out last week. We haven't got that, I'll just keep talking. Um, previously we had a policy of informed neutrality. Um, that came out in 2005 in a conference that was next door to LCA then. The new policy basically says agencies must consider all forms of software, including open source, equally. It's actually stronger than that and it says they have to document how they do it. The documentation will go out in a tender, if we're going out for a tender saying, please tell us how you're doing it. Suppliers will be required in their bids to explain how they've looked at open source as well as um, proprietary and other solutions. Right, I'll keep going. Okay, that'll do. So the suppliers are there. We're going to put requirements in the RFT. We want justifications in, in the responses and we have to look at those when we do the evaluation. Next slide. Okay, um, agencies are also going to actively participate in the community. Um, particularly, we'll be asked to give back stuff where we modify things. This is great. Next slide. <laughs> it, it applies now. And last slide, there's some contact details. Thank you. Thank you, that's reassuring to hear. Our next presentator. <laughs> Zaf Clifford, uh, uh, Nick Clifford, sorry. Apologies. You have heard the rumours and we can confirm they are true. The next Linux Conf AU will be in Antarctica. That would be the last slide, guys. <laughs> can we get like right back really, really, really quickly? Like I'm running low on time here. Am I insane? Probably. But wait, have you considered this? Antarctica is the ideal location. It's drier than Wellington and we can promise no floods whatsoever. Our team has done extensive planning and all events have been organised. I'm happy to report there will be budget accommodation, but unfortunately you will still need to bring your own toilet paper. We have already lined up our first keynote speakers. <laughs> Who is 100% on board? <laughs> we have our core team because, as Rusty says, each year the delegates will run the conference, but we've decided, well, no, okay, we're going on. Wow, that's going to be cooler than here. <laughs> Tim Ansel. You got my slides? Make sure they start the start. It's a good way to get through it quicker. Well, I'm going to talk about other things LA does. Um, so who here thought this conference was absolutely awesome? 
And this conference is like absolutely. You got my slides? There's no slides. How do I get to the next thing? Um, who wants more? Yeah. LA runs other conferences too. Um, there was the Drupal Down Under, which ran last week. Um, hopefully it will run again. I do not know. I'm not on that organising committee. Um, there's WordCamp, which is in Melbourne in February. If you're a WordPress aficionado, go along and have a look at that. There's even more awesome. There's PyCon. PyCon is a, a conference dedicated to the best programming language in the world. Um, if you have a topic that you're really interested in, why not try running your own conference? Um, LA, it would really like to support conferences um, in open source community. Um, there are even other things. Do you have a blog? You should put it on Planet LA. You should also join a log. Thank you very much. Next one is Kimberly Weatherall. Kimberly? And there are no slides. Yes. Um, this is. Yeah. <laughs> Does that mean I get extra time? Anyway, no, apparently not. Anyway, um, this is the idiot's guide to copyright because, you know, too little law at LA is, you know, never enough. Um, so, idiot's guide to copyright over the next 12 months copyright policy, IP policy, anti counterfeiting trade agreement. You may have heard of it, it's all over, but the crying, the text is done. The only question is whether Australia will sign it. They will, they've just spent the last two years negotiating it. It's too embarrassing otherwise. Trans-Pacific Partnership, much more scary. Um, yet, yeah, we're talking here about Australia-US free trade agreement on steroids. More countries, and they've had six years to think up even more nasty ways to make strong IP law. Um, so if you have a New Zealander friend sitting beside you in the audience, make puppy dog eyes at them right now, because they're the ones for whom it will cost. They're the only ones who have a hope of fighting it. The Australian government is likely to bend over, as we know. Um, so that's the main sort of agreements. IINet, you may have heard, there was this ISP, completely, of course, unaware, shocked, shocked to hear there was BitTorrenting on their system. <laughs> um, held not liable for said BitTorrenting. Full federal court decision due any minute now. Um, IINet may well lose. Um, and if they lose, there'll be lots, well, whether or not they lose, there'll be lots of legislative discussion about, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lots of legislative discussion about three strikes. The debate is coming. Um, and the last thing is DRM. We're gonna have a review. Thank you. Can we, Mitch Davies? Behind me. Yes, hello. Yes, uh, who here has sold it? Yeah, oh, lots of people. Uh, done through hold work? Come on, come on. Yep. Yeah. Through hold work, how about surface mount? Done surface mount? Yeah, fair number. The kind of devices you go down the street to buy now are all done using surface mount. So the cool kind of chips that are coming out now, the only way to get them is surface mount. Yet a lot of hobbyists are only doing stuff in through hold. Um, people say, oh, well, surface mount's a bit hard. Well, there's a secret. 
One, uh, one component comes in different sizes. If you get the large size of component, you can solder it with an ordinary iron. And if you can solder through hole, you can learn how to solder through uh, a surface mount. Um, in order to help people learn how to do surface mount soldering, we've come up with a little project called USB Doodad. It's got a small micro, like the Arduino, drives a string of LEDs, speak to the, speaks to the PC over USB. Uh, and it does a bunch of really cool things. It's a Creative Commons, so you can go to the website that's down the bottom there, download the plans, download the parts list, or if you want to do it the easy way, uh, we've got it in a kit with the chip pre-soldered. And um, if you need help, you can jump onto the forum, or you've got a fantastic hackerspace here. So 30, one hour of your time, you can learn how to surface mount solder. Thank you. Thank you. Probably need a first aid kit for myself for that one. Um, Steve and Alice. Okay. Um, I'm here to talk to what's suddenly becoming a majority in the audience here. All you people with your nice shiny MacBooks. Um, how many of you have ever tried to run Linux on your MacBook? Hands up. How many of you have got it working? How many of you have never tried? It's actually not that difficult these days. Most of the major Linux distributions support running on Apple hardware, as long as it's not the uber bleeding edge Apple put it out last week variety. Uh, what I advise you to do is get hold of Refit. It's a bootloader. Uh, do your initial partitioning under OS X. One big gotcha up front, if you ever plan on upgrading OS X, leave a gap of 128 what? meg between the OS X partition and your Linux partition. Otherwise, major OS upgrades from Apple won't work. Uh, after you've done that, um, you can then boot a variety of Linux distributions on your hardware. I'm running, at the moment, Fedora on this. It also runs Red Hat Enterprise 6, Enterprise 5, Ubuntu. In the past, it's run Debian, OpenSUSE. I've gone through a wide variety of distributions. They all work really well on the hardware. Um, that, that's it. So give it a whirl. Jethro Carr. Good afternoon, LDEP lovers. Uh, don't lie, you guys all hate LDEP. Well, as we know, LDEP's a great system, but it's got a few flaws. I mean, wonderful enterprise-style interfaces from the 80s. <laughs> Sorry, Red Hat. Uh, beautiful command syntax to manually load users and groups into the system. Yeah, no. That's just really <laughs> fucking nasty. So I sat down and wrote a little tool just to be purely user and group management via a web-based PHP interface called LDEP Auth Manager. Fully AGPL, you can download it, runs really minimally. Use the group management, can do radius stuff, and even has logging for your LDAP servers in one place. And that makes me as just admin much happier. So check it out and download it and send me some feedback. We've been using it in production now for about a year at a large ISP. Um, does the trick and uh, cheers, check it out. and make life much easier for me too, I hope. Uh, Stuart Guthrie. Okay. Which one? The space bar. Oh, the left. Yeah. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm here to talk about the open source industry, Australia. Um, oh. It's on. Hey, sir. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, could I get a poll? Hands up. Um, uh, if in your real work life you support, sell, enhance open source software for money, thank you. Now put your hands down if you're a member of Osia. Okay. <laughs> we'll be talking later. Okay, uh, so thanks, we now know who you are. I've only got time for uh, two reasons to join Osia. 
The first, obviously, is advocacy. Uh, in the past, we've done a, a good job of submissions to government, press releases, informed opinion to various people. OZIA represents commercial open source interests in business and government. Uh, the second reason is business networking, not to be confused with uh, the one everybody here knows well. OZIA members uh, refer work to people like you if you do open source work. Uh, unfortunately, we often don't know what sort of work you like, um, who you've worked for, how you do business. These sorts of conversations happen at OZIA meetings. Okay. That's where we do case studies and people tell us all about the sorts of customers they like, etc. My point is we can't all know everything. If our customers have IT needs outside our domain expertise, here's our choice. Reliable, trusted, known, open source business or someone else. Share and enjoy. Next up is Jeff Chompton. Compton? Can't read. Any glasses? Thank you. Which keyboard? Thank you. Next weekend, Debian will release its next stable release, Debian 6.0, codename Squeeze. <laughs> Probably. It's been delayed in the past. Why should you care, though? That depends on who you are. If you're the Debian release manager, it may mean you can take a break. If you're a Debian developer, you might be able to flush some um, packets from experimental to unstable. If you're a user, maybe you'll be able to do some upgrades. Um, if you're involved in another distribution, you could possibly take a hiatus about making jokes about Debian's release cycle. <laughs> what do you get with Debian Squeeze? You get lots of stuff. It's Debian. There's lots of stuff. But I've only got 90 seconds, so you have to read quickly. That's some GUI stuff. That's some kind of, you know, behind the scenes stuff. That's some other webby stuff. <laughs> you get thousands of packages. There's two FreeBSD ports. You don't have to run Linux anymore. You can play with other kernels. Uh, Backports.debian.org is official. There are Debian Live CD and DVD images, and all the firmware is free. Okay, Donna. Hello. Hasn't this been an awesome conference? Okay, hands up if you've heard of Louisa Lawson. Not many of you. Uh, hands up if you've heard of Henry Lawson. Yeah, okay, so Louisa Lawson is unfortunately most famous for being his mother. However, she actually published the first um, Australian journal for women by women. Hands up if you've heard of the Trove Project, the digitising Australian newspapers. More of you than have heard of Louisa Lawson. Um, so the Dawn is available in entirety on microfiche in most major Australian libraries. It is not currently scheduled to be digitised by the National Library and the Trove Project. However, I have been in communication with them and for the tiny sum, of seven and a half thousand dollars, they will digitise the dawn. Now I had some slides, um, which had the URL in it, and I'll tweet that out. But it's if you can do this, katakrab, K-A-T-T-E-K-R-A-B, dot net slash digitise dash dawn. I've started a chip in campaign to raise that seven and a half thousand dollars and get the dawn digitised. Join me, please. Digitise the dawn. Thank you. Stephen Boyd. Stephen somewhere? That's quick. That's done. <laughs> Rusty. Slides? That's fine. Don't, Ready? Oh, don't have any slides. Go. Thank you. Apparently there were supposed to be slides. Anyway, um, so who was here on the, key the keynote Wednesday? Jeff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apocalypse, etc. Yeah. That annoyed me, so I started typing. Um, 
CCAN uh, now has a module in it which does uh, convenient simultaneous connect over IPv4 and IPv6. So. I thought surely this is trivial, many people have done this before and I figured out quite why they haven't. It's actually not as little code as you might think. Um, but it seemed to work twice for me, so I've put it up there. Um, I, it actually depends on another module. It's, it's MIT, I'm going to relicense the other module so the whole thing will be MIT or public domain, so hopefully no one will get this wrong. And you can all just cut and paste it and use it. The only thing I would request is if you do use it and you have feedback about the interface and stuff or some corner issues, please just send me an email and tell me about your experiences. So that's ccan.oslabs.org slash list.html. We'll show you the whole list of modules. Look for the net module and there you go. Okay, thank you. Mary Gardner. And Valerie. Okay, so who here has heard that women are underrepresented in open source development? Yeah, it's it's everyone, right? Um, there have been ten years of of advocacy around women in open source. Uh, you might have heard of some of these groups: Linux Chicks, Debian Women, Drupal Chicks, and similar groups have done amazing work. But if you look around, the problem still persists. Why is that? They're all volunteer groups, so they were doing unpaid work and they're limited in time and energy. What kind of stuff could we do if we had money to spend on women in open source? We could do projects like FERTS Patch Week, mentoring women over a week to produce and submit their FERTS Patch to an open source project. We could offer expertise to everyone from companies, through to projects, through to events, on making their community welcome women. Um, we could produce policy frameworks, we could produce training courses that would be open and freely available to everyone from companies through to volunteer events. So, long time uh, open, women in open source advocates, Valerie Aurora and M Mary Gardner, that's me, are currently raising money for two years of full-time, minimum two years full-time paid work on women in open source. Uh, got ideas, got funding, contact the ADA initiative, info at adainitiative.org. Thanks, Mary. Yes? Yeah. Uh, Jos Portfleet, uh, Open Source Community Manager for Novell. I have 24 slides, so please, uh, you know, <laughs> I'll try to talk. Uh, sorry, which button? Okay. Yeah, she's. Okay, so I have noticed that a lot of people here have really no idea what SUSE has been up to lately. And I think if you're a system administrator or basically active in free software, you should know. So I'll try to give a little taste of that uh, in these 24 slides. <laughs> so this is SUSE Studio and you can use it to create appliances from the web interface. Click create appliance, pick a base template, give it a name, Pick the software you like, and there are like thousands of repositories you can easily add to your repositories, of course, it's all connected to the OpenSUSE build service, which is also pretty awesome. Uh, if there are conflicts, you know, you can fully uh, solve them in the web interface. When you're done, you can configure it, network, users and groups, you can add your own look and feel, you can configure databases, you can pick any uh, stuff you need for your virtual images, you can add custom scripts, you can upload files, single files or a whole overlay, anything you like. Then you pick, you know, how you want the output. Do you want uh, virtual images for VMware, Zen, whatever you like, live CDs, uh, installable, no problem. Build it, and once you're done, you can test drive it for 45 minutes from the web interface or via SSH. Any changes you made are saved directly. So this is just a little taste of what OpenSUSE has been doing, and there's a lot more where this came from. So if you want to know, look me up, and, you know, I can enlighten you. Thank you. And Daniel Smith. Uh, 
All right, I'm uh, here and I'm, funnily enough, uh, wanting coffee. But um, what I'm doing is I'm introducing something that's um, been on our mind for a little while. It's a new conference in Australia. Um, it's happening in October 2011 in Sydney. And it's something that we feel is missing and from the feedback we've been getting from everyone, it seems like it's a missing conference in Australia. So. What is it? It is the PHP Conf Australia, found at twitter.com, phpconf.au. Um, follow that and you'll get some updates and we'll keep you updated on that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. That's the last of our lightning talks. We will now move into some prizes. <laughs>